Okay, as you prepare yourself to hear the words of Kryon, feel the anchoring in this sacred circle. Let it come up through your feet, through your spine. Fill your body with the ancient vibrations of this land. The crystals in the stones and in Gaia, the crystalline grid here. And the ancient wisdom beneath us that brought this place into being. And breathe into the expanded consciousness that you can find here in the sacred stones, the rituals that were done here, the celebrations, and let your heart fill with this joyous occasion of celebration. You are here, and the earth celebrates that. The heavens celebrate that. The stones celebrate that. And we celebrate that with you. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Surface. For the listener, we find ourselves at Stonehenge. This very famous place, dear ones, is a place where you are honoring the builders, the ancestors, and also you're honoring the fact that this is a site which is stewarded today, protected today, so that you can see it as close as possible to the way it was discovered. There aren't that many mysteries here, but there is honorings. This is the sixth message in this land. And to the listener, if you've come upon this and you want to know where the others are, you're in the wrong place. It should be obvious, and there's a place where these messages are stewarded and put together in order. If you look upon this site and compare it to the others, there is something obvious. It's more elegant. If you could look a thousand years ahead in time, what do you think your society might look like? Very different indeed. A thousand years ago, what would society look like, yours? And the answer is very different. And that's about the amount of time between those who built the last circle you stood in and this one. So there is an elegance here that was not there before. And the elegance isn't just in that which they are now balancing the stones and putting them in perfect circles, but the elegance comes in the realization of celestial alignment. They understand the equinoxes. They understand the shadows that are cast when certain things take place. And there is an honoring in that. It might even be a cosmic honoring in that. It brings those who built it closer, even to the sky. It's like their way of saying, we are now one with nature, understanding the system of nature will celebrate and participate. This is a multi-purpose circle just like the others. But whereas the other ones seem to have a tendency to have been built for that which is birth, this one is built for Gaia. So taking a look at fertility over and over through the ages, this one now starts to change. Uh, we're looking at those who are looking at the cosmos and figuring systems out. 
but it's still a henge, and it has the tradition of most of the henges. So I go back to that which I told you about the last circle we were in. If you looked at the dating of what came first here, it's interesting. The first was the ditch and the avenue, the causeway. For it's always the ditch and the causeway because this helps build the henge, the rocks, the circle. In this particular case, there's an unusual distance of time between that which the ditch was built and the rocks were placed. There were other things that happened. The ditch that was built that you see around this one, even the avenue, was not actually for this one. It was for others that came first. There's two kinds, basically, of stones here from two different areas. The ones that I sit within, a smaller circle, was part of the original set of stones. They've been identified as from a place about 130 miles from here called Wales. And one of the mysteries is, how did they get the stones here? For the quarry, that is to say, where the stones are, where they're from, where they lay around on the ground, a natural resource. There's no, there, there, there's no obvious way they got them here. There's no roads or indication of former roads. A difficult task it would be to carry them all of that distance or push them or tow them. Well, dear ones, I'm going to give you something now that the archaeologists will laugh at until they discover their own evidence. Those particular stones, the first stones here, the smaller ones that I am within now, were here when the stone builders wanted them. In other words, they did not transport them. They were already here. They were brought here tens of thousands of years earlier by the ice. The ice pushed them along until they got to be here, 130 miles from the origin. Those who studied weather know of what I speak and know and can measure where the ice flowed from and to and confirm that they were pushed here. So this will then solve one of the mysteries of how these particular smaller stones, the original stones, got to this place. The other stones, the large ones you see, are ones just like the other circles. They belong here. Interesting how a thousand years will make such a elegant difference and that which is the beginning of actual carving, of balancing. It looks majestic. It looks different, doesn't it? Stones on stones. Some will say, well, how could they possibly have lifted some of these stones upon the others? It would have taken large machines or other apparatus. And I have something to say to that. These people were smart. These people were elegant and they knew what they were doing because they had a thousand or more years of knowledge of pushing dirt around. <laughs> All you need is dirt manif manifesting with dirt and holes in the right place, fulcrums, gravity and balance, and you can lift a stone to almost any height. That was revealed even in Easter Island. It's not a mystery how to manipulate, balance large stones with other stones. Done in a very simple way and clever. So that's not the mystery. Truly the mystery is who did this? Were they imported? 
Were they from another place? Did they live here? Is it possible, dear ones, that by that time there were specialists, specialists in circles? This one is almost a perfect circle, unlike the other ones. Now they have geometry. Now they understand celestial alignment, and their alignment, oddly enough, is the same alignment of the pyramids. Now it's not that odd because the pyramids also understood celestial movement. So the pyramids are also aligned in the same way this one is. You might say, as far apart as they were, they were still discovering the cosmos. So you have the stones around me that were small as the first circle, the precursor, you might say, of the larger one that was built later. Some have asked about the smoothness of the interior stones, almost like they were starting to get into carving so that they could make flat surfaces a lot easier. Indeed, they did, and you will see them even in this arrangement, much more than in the last one. And some have asked, were these necessarily for acoustics? Was there some kind of sound balancing? As elegant and fun as they may sound, I will give you a more practical explanation. They were smooth, as smooth as they could be, because they were a canvas. Every single one had paintings on them. Not only that, they could change the paintings for the celebration. And they did. So here you have understandings that start to begin with the creation, with the paintings, the stonework, all of the things you start to see here and much which you cannot see because you weren't there. The real story of Stonehenge is that it's still here that it was seen as something with energy that should be preserved, that it may have been the very beginning of an elegance of understanding of the cosmos, of the celestial idea of the celebration and understanding of equinox and beyond. So enjoy this place, because if the ancestors could be here right now, they would be smiling. And they would say, good job to have preserved what we gave you in this fashion. The ancestors are here. The focus of this particular circle, not just birth, not death, not ancestors, but Gaia. The understanding of the movement of the sun and the moon and the stars. Let the ancestors celebrate you while you celebrate them. And they say thank you for the preservation of something precious to them and now precious to you. And so it is.